Hi guys, it's 4.30, it's Friday uh, afternoon, I'm sure you've all had a busy working week, uh, but we're back here again to do another Facebook Live session, um, and we're today going to be focusing very much on the staff meetings, so employer meetings, and how we actually get the best results from those, the importance of them, and why they're key to your actual business. So, as always, it's an interactive session, it's going to take anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes but I won't go any longer than that because I know you've all got the weekend uh, to enjoy or ahead of you um, but as always please questions if you have any pop them down if I can't answer them during this session I will answer them within the uh, the comments section on the Facebook page as always you can uh, send a direct message to the Facebook page or through our website at www elearningforyou.co.uk where you can watch this video back, share it out um, alongside the other videos that we've been doing. Now I normally give a long list of if the courses or the, the subjects we're going to be talking about on these Facebook live sessions. I hope you've enjoyed the ones we've done previously uh, for you and a lot of it feeds into what we're going to discuss today. Um, for those that don't know me, I should have introduced myself at the beginning. I am Paul Blaine and I'm the Director of Training Services at eLearning for You and Affinity Training. So I'll cover a whole host of subjects. But these ones that we've been looking at are very much focused towards management training um, and, and how we can be better leaders in ourselves within our organisation. So little snapshots. So like I said, fire any questions uh, you want to me. But I'm going to actually get swiftly moving on today um, and look very much at the staff meeting and, and, and why we have them or the employer engagement. Now, in week one, um, we talked very much about future. So what was the focus? What was the ambition of your organisation? What was the ambition of yourself? What were you actually going to uh, move forward with in terms of what you wanted to achieve? Uh, we talked about engagement, how you were actually going to get staff. Uh, to feel part of that, part of that goal, part of that vision. And certainly last week when we were looking at retention and recruitment of staff, we were looking at how to go and get those best staff, how to actually make your fish pond, if you like, full of fish that come towards you and not everybody else. And they're all going to feed in to what that future is that you set out um, on week one. Now, staff meetings, they are the engagement level. And I see so many organisations who will have meetings for the sake of having meetings, um, or the meetings will go on for far too long, um, or they don't have any meetings at all. And therefore, you get a whole host of, of problems that result in a lack of communication, a lack of vision, a, a lack of what I would class as leadership, because the staff meetings, etc., like that, are ways to show leadership within a business. Make sure everybody is working uh, to the right goals, as, as we sort of like said before. So, what what is it that, that goes wrong with staff meetings? First, first thing to address. One is that actually they can become much more of a lecture than a, a, a brainstorming exercise. Um, the second one uh, that is a big problem to it is that we don't get good attendance at staff meetings, and that's because people. Uh, aren't getting anything from it, they don't feel that they're getting any value uh, from attending those staff meetings, or certainly we're not pushing it in a way to, to bring about an enforcement to say that it's a company's uh, culture or beliefs that actually we all come together to have these discussions. If you don't have staff meetings, um, then there will be a lack of, of communication that filters through the company. And certainly if you were a company that was just having a meeting uh, once every month or, or once every other month, then people would get uh, disillusioned. Um, they would actually lose focus on what it is that you're trying to achieve. So it's a good way, staff meetings are a very good way for leaders, managers um, to actually determine whether they are moving in the right direction. They are moving forward and they are moving forward uh, to the vision that was created uh, within the business plan or the strategy, etc. like that. So, my recommendations for staff meetings uh, very much look to actually schedule them in so that it becomes company policy that is happening. And that could be every other week. I, I tend to like staff meetings to happen on a weekly basis for a catch-up or review, whether it be a sales strategy meeting, whether it be product development, 
whether it be um, a staff meeting in a care home to make sure that everybody knows what the action, the course of, of, of the organisation, where it's going that week, as I said, what's the problems that could arise, how are we going to address them, how are we going to fix them, those sort of things. But the critical thing is that you actually don't make them too lengthy. So a good staff meeting potentially is, is 20 minutes to 30 minutes in length. And we can cut down on all the things that, that we don't uh, need to have that, that filter a way in to staff meetings. They sort of act as a filler, if you like, um, by taking them out and making sure that people come prepared to staff meetings. Now that takes a little bit of work from our end. And, and I like to sort of like look at, at five key elements uh, for staff meetings. So I would run them, as I said, uh, once a week or once every other week. Um, but I would have clear focus about what it is that I want to achieve. Now I've given myself a time frame of 20 to 30 minutes to have this staff meeting. So there's no point putting an agenda together that's going to last for an hour or an hour and a half. Because if we do that, uh, then nobody will come to the next meeting or the meeting after that because they'll think to themselves, we, we don't know how long they're going to last. So you have to really focus it down on that time. So what is the agenda that we're actually going to set? What are we trying to get out of it? What is the end goal? So with agendas, it's no, just, uh, it's no good just having um, topics for the sake of having topics. If you've created uh, a, a future and you want to actually do... Uh, uh, quality assurance that week by sending out a questionnaire then that could be your agenda that, that's agenda item number two I'll get to what agenda item number one should be at the start of every meeting um, but let's move on to agenda item number two you've got the focus of what it is that you're trying to achieve so if there's, if there's questionnaires going out to all staff what do they look like how long are we actually giving for this discussion on this particular topic is it five minutes uh, that we're giving it what do we want as a result at the end of it? Is it that we all agree with the questions that are within it or how we're actually going to measure the results from it? And then that can become another agenda item at the next meeting. But what we aren't going to do is sit there for 40 minutes or an hour discussing one topic like questionnaires. And I'm just using that as an example. Um, it could be a multitude of different things that you do. But the focus has to be very short, very short, what it is that we're trying to achieve so that people feel that if they've been told to turn up for 30 minutes to the meeting, they can have the rest of their life or go back to the normal working practice um, after that 30 minutes. And therefore, they can give clear messages out to staff who aren't at the meeting, uh, if, if you're having a head of department meeting, for example, that you do not disturb me during that half an hour unless it's an absolute emergency. Because that moves us on to number two, which is attention. And, and what I mean by attention is, is people actually being focused at the meeting. Um, now, I have a, a bit of a rule where I say if the meeting is going to last for 30 minutes, um, then we should switch phones off for 30 minutes. No one should be opening up a laptop and becoming distracted uh, with emails. Um, and it's that key component to actually say, at the, at the time, I've got you for half an hour. I've got your mind for 30 minutes. I, I've got your capabilities to help bring solutions uh, to a table. So I need your focus. I need your attention. They're all key elements. And if everybody turns up knowing that that is the company policy, then they will do it. They will switch them off. Worst case scenario... Take everybody's phone off them and put it at the centre of the table, if that's where it's got to go. But don't let people become distracted, because once one person gets distracted, then the person next to them is distracted, because they're looking at what that person was up to, and before you know it, you've lost attention. You have to end up repeating yourself, because somebody, when asked a question, will say, oh, what, what's that? What, say it again. Well, you're losing time because we've focused 30 minutes on this. So, attention and focus. Now, to make people very attentive, uh, we have to do a number uh, of things. It's not just about what they do at the meeting. It's about what they've done before the meeting. And we need to actually make sure that someone is turning up uh, with the agenda. They have it. With the minutes to the previous meeting, they have that as well. And by having that and by having any documents that can correspond with the agenda uh, item, it allows them to come pre-packed with their questions, uh, which is critical 
because we don't want to have a debate. We, we want to actually be questions, solutions, answers, attention, driven, clear. That's what I'm going after, remember. And that allows us to make those decisions. And the decisions are the critical point of a staff meeting. If you can't make decisions within a staff meeting, then they become an absolute pointless exercise. We have to be decision making at those staff meetings. And that doesn't mean that because I'm the boss, because I'm the CEO, uh, that we go by my decision and everybody's there to listen. I'm bringing something to the agenda because I want buy-in. I want people to actually listen to what I've said. I've produced a document beforehand for people to read. Um, and I want them to come in and tell me whether they believe it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do or how we would tweak it for the better. That's the decisions that you're going to get out of it. And those decisions can then be taken forward and made to work in a practical um, setting. The timescale action plan is the bit that has to come off the back of those decisions. And that is, who's doing it? Who's going to actually do the solution? Who, who's going to put it into practice? Uh, is there some person to lead it up? And by having such a dynamic team, you have the ability to delegate and look around the table and the person who's passionate about the agenda item or the person who believes it is normally the best person to actually see it through, see it through to the end. So on the basis of that, what we've got to do is say, okay, well there's an expectancy around the table in the meeting that we can do this within seven days or within 14 days or within three months, wherever it's, uh, it is that the decision uh, that's made. But the key is we now put someone in charge of actually making sure that it happens, of working with other people, of selling it into the organisation, and that's where it becomes the action plan. Now, it could be that you decide, OK, well, if it is three months, then we want a progress report at every single meeting. But you're giving a team, you're giving people the opportunity to go away and actually bring something that can be delivered. And that empowers people when they can do that. Also, it means they're going to turn up at the next meeting and the meeting after that and the meeting after that. Uh, just simply because they've got to give the progress report in, which is a key thing to actually get the attention of everybody. So time scales, action plans, very important. Now what I will say at the bottom of uh, point four is this is where a bit of work needs to come in because someone's got to, as I said, put the agenda together in the first place, but then someone has actually got to write up the minutes. And those minutes should be very clear and uh, concise into what it is that you are actually talking about. Who was in attendance? Who was actually uh, given or allocated the job to do that um, task? What was the timescales on it? Those minutes really need to be typed up and sent out at least, uh, or within, sorry, 24 hours of that meeting. If you really want people to walk away, be focused and be sharp, then there should be minutes produced within 24 hours and sent out. Now, it doesn't matter how big your organisation is, whether you have five staff or whether you have 5,000 staff. Uh, the best way that you can actually get minutes out to people is via a communication tool, um, whether that be that you have set up a, a Facebook group for your staff, whether it be that you've got an intranet, or whether it be uh, that you've got all email addresses to people, or you're using a, a learning management system, wherever it may be. What shouldn't happen, really, is that we print them out and we post them up on a wall somewhere for everybody to see and read. Because that's not actually targeting the individual. And you're, you're of the assumption that everybody that walks past that wall is going to have a read. But remember, how many people walk past that wall and do read it? And is there going to be some people that read them that you wouldn't want to read them? I.e., if you're in health and social care... And maybe you don't want the inspector walking around and reading the minutes to the, the, the meeting that you had. Because they have to be factually correct minutes. And these meetings will unearth things that sometimes you want to deal with in-house to get things sorted. So the only way that you are going to get staff attention is staff know that they're going to get those minutes emailed out to them. If they get them emailed out to them or any other way where it's hitting them in a, a, a personal level, they will read the minutes. Then they get the agenda for the next meeting. Now the key bit behind the agenda for the next meeting, I said, um, the agenda should be set up with item 2, 3, 4. 
Agenda item number one should always be a review of the minutes to the last meeting. Now, I've been involved in many meetings, whether it be at local authority level, whether it be at parish council level, and believe me, some of those meetings can go on far too long um, if there's any councillors out there listening in. Um, I've also been in board meetings, etc., like that, um, at high levels, and, and what I would say is that the, the critical bit that goes wrong sometimes is they don't actually look at the minutes that were produced or review the minutes that were produced from the previous meeting. You have to go through them because you might not have done everything, but you need a reason as to why you've not done them. You need to know what's happening as a result. This is all about, when we talked about the future, setting it out, the engagement, getting everybody together to actually work on the proposals, to work on how we're actually going to bring something through, and then the delivery, which is, is what we talk about uh, when we say that we actually have the result at the end. These meetings are critical to get that delivery, and you cannot let things go. It's a little bit like the Jack Russell around the ankles. Staff meetings should be that focused, that actually people who've been set the timescales of the action plans, because they've found their names or their initials within a, a, a minutes uh, that have been produced, because that's been emailed out, and because that's going to get reviewed at the next meeting in two weeks' time, you'll find that they don't want to keep turning up and saying, I haven't done it, or we've not had chance to do it. They will turn up and say, it's done, and then you can move it on. But, you know, I did say today was going to be a bit short. The whole part of it is going to be around review. The review of everything. Now, a good leader isn't just turning up to a meeting and thinking that they, they can just start talking. They'll actually have a pre-meeting to that meeting, whether it be with another colleague or associate within their organisation, to work out what that agenda is going to look like. And as I said, uh, too many times I see a standard, standard agenda item with too many agenda items on it. Keep them short, keep them sweet, make them 20 to 30 minutes in length, make them once every other week if, if you're not doing that already, or at least once a week if you're trying to uh, drive a message through. But tie it all in, make sure you write up your minutes properly. And when I say properly, um, just to sort of like give you a, an example of something, I won't let it zoom in too much because I don't want you reading it. Um, proper minutes are typed. Proper minutes are sketch, uh, uh, put into the different areas that you've discussed and the different agenda item numbers. They're always signed, they're always dated. If you don't have evidence to the meeting taking place, if you don't have minutes to record it or feedback from that meeting, what I will say to you is there's a chance that meeting never happened. And that's because people will forget, people will not do, um, and you will have no evidence to turn around and say it's there, you can see it, you were supposed to do it. You want people to do something, then you do minutes and you write them down. Now, that's a snapshot of certain things that we've got to get inside um, staff meetings and the reason why we have them at any level. And um, what I would say is a good leader doesn't have to, if you're the MD, if you are a director of our service, um, you don't have to attend every meeting. Um, these meetings that, that happen once or uh, once a week or twice um, a week, maybe, if you've got other line managers in your company, let them have focus meetings for 30 minutes as well, um, so you don't actually have to attend. Easiest way I can look at this is I see too many times within the care environment um, where you have uh, care team managers or seniors um, who are line managing um, the care staff and yet the meetings are always held with the care home manager or the deputy manager who necessarily aren't line managing. You, you, you're, you're stripping away a part of the hierarchy there because you've put somebody in to line manage the person in the job role just below theirs but you don't allow them to actually host the staff meeting. So let them have the staff meeting. And then your meeting becomes with your deputy manager and your senior people that you've put in position. But if you drive it, if you have the template of how a staff meeting works, how it runs, then they will start to have more and more meetings. And all that is going to do is add to the communication and the betterment of your organisation and your company. What you uh, do not uh, want to do is go right back to what I said before. Just because you're having a meeting doesn't mean you're doing good. Keep it focused and make sure... Um, that everybody is aware of what's going on in your organisation.
the values and the structure. A little bit. I'm going to leave it there. Sorry, I, I, we've got a question. We've got a question. Okay. So from Chris Hogsden, uh, any top tips for holding staff meetings with a remote care at home workforce, Skype, or even using Facebook Live or similar? Yes, absolutely. Um, I use a lot, whether it be uh, if I've got a product I want to show staff, I'll do webinars, there's conference call facilities. In fact, you can do conference call facilities through Facebook, through Facebook Messenger, it's free. So you could set up a, a messenger group and do it that way. Um, all the, the only difficulty you have with conference call um, agenda meetings is if you've got 20 or 30 people that jump in, uh, it's not the same as face-to-face -face because you... You can't read the body language, etc., like that. So Skype is a good way because people will not interrupt. They will come in and you know who's coming in. Conference calls can be quite interrupting at times unless there is a clear agenda. It goes back to that clear agenda. Don't let anybody wander off and start talking about a different topic. You've got to keep them atten uh, uh, grab their attention. Also, if you've got four agenda items on there and you're doing it that way, um, you must make sure if somebody wants to start talking about agenda item number three and you're still on agenda item number one, um, that you are a strong chairperson and you're able to uh, say, no, we'll get to that um, in 10 minutes' time. Um, but we're now focusing on this. But yeah, Skype, webinars, conference calls, they're all working, they're all good, um, but visual is always best. So I would choose, if you're doing it remotely, one where people can see each other um, as opposed to the conference calls, which are good, um, but it's voices on a phone and nobody knows um, who's jumping in. Is there any other questions that have come up? Or are we happy with that? Good. Um, right, guys, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to wish you a brilliant weekend. As always, these videos will be available on the Facebook page, or you can jump over to the, uh, the website. I'll say it again. It's www elearningforyou.co.uk and you can uh, watch the videos back from there. There's a little YouTube um, link that you can click and it takes you to our YouTube videos. Lots of videos on there for you to, to look at. Next week, um, next week we are discussing leadership teams. So if you are a manager or you're a deputy, I'm going to be very much talking about the capabilities uh, that you're looking for in someone as you develop that leadership team around you. It's quite a big topic next week, that one. Um, so come on uh, in, get tuned in, 4.30 on Friday. Come prepared with a lot of questions um, because we will be talking very much about what a good manager looks like. For now, I'm going to leave you be. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks for joining us um, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.